Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have two questions. Uh, first for uh, Dr. Walensky and then for Dr. Fauci. Over the last two decades, uh, HHS has issued only four public health emergency declarations. H1N1, Zika, opioid crisis, and COVID-19. On August 2nd, uh, declared monkeypox a nationwide public health emergency. Of the over 20,000 people diagnosed with monkeypox, since May of 2022, there's been one fatality. I'm concerned that the public health emergency declarations will not be taken seriously if it's a litany for every new challenge that comes along to where we're going to get the public to buy into it. Um, I guess I'd like to ask, what are the criteria used for determining whether a disease or a disorder constitutes a public health emergency? Thank you for that question, Senator. Um, what we were seeing in late May, early June was a doubling time of this um, of new cases of about every eight days, so increased number of new cases. And um, among the things that is important, I think, is we understand when a public health emergency, and in fact, I will invite uh, the Secretary, uh, uh, Assistant Secretary O'Connell to maybe chime in here as well, is what are the things that that public health emergency unlocks for us to be able to do, whether it be in flexibility of funding and resources Resources, um, whether it be in uh, emergency use authorizations, whether it be um, in other flexibilities so that we have the capacity as an agency to deliver as much health as possible. I don't know if uh, Dr. Kayla for Secretary O'Connell want to chime in there. Just to concur with what Dr. Walensky said, the public health emergency created an atmosphere in which FDA was willing to use its emergency use authorization authority, uh, in which it was easier for states to give us the data that Senator Murphy and Dr. Walensky just talked about. Um, it makes it easier for uh, local public health departments to uh, shuffle employees around in order to put them towards uh, the current response, uh, so it created some flexibilities. It was also an important signal to the community that we were paying attention, that this is um, an emergency in our view, and that we want to provide as much uh, countermeasures and, and response mechanisms as possible. It also aligned with what WHO did. It declared a public health emergency of international concern. We have the most cases in the world. Uh, so it was consistent with, um, with what their determination was. Ultimately, it's the Secretary's decision, um, and he made that decision in August, as you said. Senator Braun, I, I would just chime in quickly. Um, I agree on the, all the things that were unlocked. If the point is we need to keep looking at our emergency capacity and our planning for it, I think we all agree we need to keep looking at this as a continuum because with climate change and everything else, there are going to be a lot more of these that come along. And I basically agree with that uh, conscientiousness, that kind of a being ready for it. But you do have to keep in mind that if it does enter some type of sequence where it gets dismissed, because it's being declared too often, to me it looks like you'd want to, you know, develop some criteria that I know it's difficult to get everything into a subset, but I worry about how people will view it if it's a litany of public health crises when we went through the COVID-19 journey, learned so much about it along the way. And of course, it was the last time I think Dr. Fauci, you and I spoke we were talking about shutting down the economy, and you said that, you know, we did that out of uncertainty. We probably never would want to do that again, and that cost trillions and trillions of dollars along the way. So we surely have learned a lot with that experience that we might use on others. Dr. Fauci, um, a lot of Americans are worried about the power of social media, and it was back uh, over a year ago, uh, or, I, yeah, in July that we talked about had there been any contact, you know, with your office. And I know that here recently a federal judge in Louisiana ruled that the Biden administration, including yourself, must turn over external communications with social media companies. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, you said there had not been any contact up to that point. Had any social media company uh, contacted you since July when we spoke last. I know that's been a decent amount of time. 
So I was just curious. I don't believe that I said there was no contact. I have had over a period of time, and I'd have to check the dates, Senator. Uh, yes. Honestly, I, I'd have to get the correct dates. That Mark Zuckerberg uh, of Facebook uh, had contacted me to make some Facebook Live discussions about encouraging people to get vaccinated and how we can make sure that people understand the importance of vaccination. So there has been, and that's public record. I think anybody who has access to the public face of that Facebook would see, I think it were three conversations that I had back and forth with him about promoting the use of vaccinations as a public health intervention. And I think on that particular uh, public health advice about the benefits of a vaccine, it's probably not where that uh, contention arises. Um, I want to narrow in on this, and it would be the original discussion of where it came from, the leak. And then they used, you know, from a lab or, you know, from a wet market. And uh, was there ever discussion on that? And to me, that's a different kind no. of issue to... To my knowledge, there was not. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I want to make sure I get correct your question. Um, if the question is, do we influencing social media in any way, the answer is a categorically no at that. And any communications that are made in that regard, as far as I'm concerned, are an open book and available. The lawsuit that you mentioned, I think it's uh, Missouri and Louisiana versus Biden and HHS and CDC and FDA and the entire government, because it involves the president, is under the Department of Justice right now. And I have handed, and my staff have handed over every document that the Department of Justice has asked for, and it's up to them to make it available. But I have held nothing back from anything that I was asked to provide. Thank Senator, you. Senator, 